travel down the hill to the water's edge and lower Largo, a pretty little settlement which runs along the shore and here, established in 1987, is very crafty. Fife's specialist craft shop, featuring a large selection of 100% cotton fabrics, quilting tools, books and accessories, as well as kits and fabrics for cross-stitch, tapestry and embroidery. In addition, a wide range of card-making supplies are also available, whilst the Coffee Corner offers home baking for the many people who travel here from far and wide. A few yards away, in an enclave of the wall, stands a bronze statue of Alexander Selkirk, which marks the spot Selkirk was born. The real-life sailor on whom Daniel Defoe based his famous book, Robinson Crusoe. Selkirk went to sea as a navigator on a privateer which was involved in a number of gun battles during its voyage. Moored off the Pacific island of Juan Fernandez, hundreds of miles from anywhere, Selkirk demanded that the ship be repaired, but was refused. So he then demanded to be put ashore with his belongings and some food for survival. It was a good decision, for shortly after they sailed, the privateer sank and the eight survivors were captured by the Spanish and held prisoner for seven years. Selkirk, however, was marooned on the island, living in complete solitude for four years and four months. On his return, everyone in the village was surprised, to say the least, including his mother, for they all thought he was long dead. He was restless and soon left home again, this time running off to London with a 16-year-old girl. About a year later, he was back at sea as a naval lieutenant. In 1719, he was aboard the HMS Enterprise in Lochalsh in the Highlands, as his flotilla of three frigates attacked Aelin Donan Castle, which was being occupied by a force of Jacobites and Spaniards. This was one of a number of actions which Rob Roy was involved in, and the MacGregors captured one of the gunships and blew up its arsenal. Later, Selkirk pops up in Plymouth and marries a widowed publican, before heading for sea once again. This time he contracted a fever, died and was buried somewhere off the coast of West Africa. We leave climbing to Upper Largo, above which rises Largo Law. Local legend says that it was created when the devil dropped a boulder on it and an outcrop of stone at the top is known as the Devil's Chair. It was a local belief for centuries that deep within Largo Law there was a stash of hidden gold. Needless to say, the gold was never found, but strange to say, in 1819, a tinker uncovered a stone coffin on the hillside, which contained a suit of armour and some items of silver. Some of the items found have been preserved in the Museum of Antiquities in Edinburgh. Another great son of Largo was Sir Andrew Wood, Scottish Admiral and loyal servant of King James III and IV. The king granted him the lands of Largo, and in return he had to keep the king's ship in a good state of repair and readiness for his regular trips to St Aidan's Chapel on the Isle of May. He built a castle using English prisoners of war, who also dug a canal about half a kilometre in length from the castle to the church. He was rowed there in an eight-oared barge every Sunday by the prisoners. Sir Andrew died in 1539 and is buried under the Isle of the Church. From here you can follow the coast road passing Earls Ferry, named after the 11th century escape by Macduff, the Earl of Fife, who was being chased by Macbeth. He hid in a cave hereabouts, then took a boat or ferry over the Forth to Dunbar. The notable golf champion and course designer James Braid was from here. The next settlement is Ely, a very attractive village. For 400 years the harbour was on an island only accessible at low tide. Now it is linked to the mainland by a narrow road which runs alongside the most amazing sandy bay. St Monan's is the next settlement, famous for its Swat Church, built by King David II in thanks for his life being spared during a stormy crossing. It was refurbished in the 1820s by William Burns, at which time the remains of General David Leslie were ditched in the sea in error. He'd lived next door at Newark Castle. An abortive restoration of the castle by Sir Robert Lorimer for Sir William Burrell at the turn of the last century never materialised, or perhaps the famous Burrell collection would now be housed here and not in Glasgow. Today, however, now the castle remains a fragmented ruin. Pittenweem is the only harbour that still operates on a truly commercial basis. It's also home to the cave used by St Philan in the 7th century. The alternative route is to head inland through Collinsborough. 
Colin, the third Earl of Balcaris, went into exile with the Stuarts between 1693 and 1700. On his return, he built this village to house his returning army. His later involvement in the 1715 uprising saw him confined to Balcaris for the rest of his life.